Hello and welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast. I'm your host Brian and alongside me as always is Jay. Tonight you guys, we have an episode I have been waiting for for a long time. We have a bonafide guest. You guys know my love for bonafide and I got none other than J.D. DeRosier. Sponsors include Bonafide, Yak Attack, Sims, Smith, Z-Man, Werner, Marine, Ray Marine, Powerpole, Astral, and Yeti. JD, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Yeah, no, we appreciate it, man. I know uh, Jay and I have been talking about this, you know, behind the scenes. I've been talking to you, and, uh, you know, Jay could tell you I've been like a little schoolgirl getting all excited for this one you know nice. we've had we had, we, yeah we've had jackson guys we've had you know hobies you know all that stuff obviously i'm floating out of an ss 127 so uh that's where my heart's at and uh you know it's great to have you on man especially with your background and your knowledge in the in the industry and the sport in general so um how about you just start off talking about uh, how you got into kayak fishing and what you mainly fish for? Okay. Uh, so I've been fishing pretty much since I can remember. I uh, got into really hardcore fishing with my grandpa growing up uh, on a local river here called the East Atoy River. Uh, he had a cabin there on the river. We would go there every other Saturday and go trout fishing. So I grew up catching rainbow trout. And then as I got older, I started gradually getting into fishing out of John boats and boats and whatnot. But my buddy, he, his dad got a, a perception kayak, didn't want it. So me living on the lake here in Greer, I was like, hey, bring it over to the house. Let's, let's play around with this thing and see what it's all about. But my buddy brought it over and I, he didn't even fish out of it. He didn't want to paddle it. So I kind of took ownership of it for about a year, paddled around with a, with, with actually a canoe paddle. Nice. Uh, and it was a sit inside. So I was like, I kind of feel like I'm back to the roots of native America. You know, it was pretty cool. Sure. And wound up catching a lot of fish, uh, fish, mostly just the lake that I live on Lake Cunningham. And then I was like, okay, I really like this. And, it's time to let's get serious about it. So I had a, a, a friend of a friend that used to work at wilderness systems okay. here in, town, in confluence. And I wound up getting a, a ride 115 and that was my first serious kayak uh, for fishing. I fished out of it for about a year and then uh, just started falling in love with it. My, my right hand man, who's like my brother, he, he bought a boat and we just started traveling around the southeast, um, hitting up rivers, hitting up swamps. Uh, I ventured down to the saltwater a good bit, but my heart is I love I love to fish rivers. I'm a river rat. Uh, I will take a river over any body, body of water any day of the week, and then I probably will gravitate towards the swamps of South Carolina in the southeast. Nice. I love, I love salt water. I'm not a big lake guy. I will go and hang out and fish or, you know, I just can't break down a big body of water. I'm always trying to cover too much water. Sure. Sure. No, that's, uh, that's, it, it seems like our theme this month might be river fishing. Cause we just had uh, drew Gregory on last episode and, you know, he was saying the same thing, you know, like he's not a big lake guy. He's always been, you know, on the rivers and, uh, it's funny, I was talking to a buddy of mine today, and he was like, you know, um, it's something that a lot of guys don't think about. They pass that up, especially up here in the north. Obviously, we have more lakes than than rivers and stuff, um, but there's rivers everywhere across the country, you know, and uh, what's unique about it is you could fish a section of river, go fish a completely different section, and it could be two different things, and uh, like me and my buddy were talking about today, it's like, 
you know, you get a big storm, rivers get high, they drop back down, and you go back out, there could be some new structure that got blown downstream and changes it up, you know? So it's a never changing thing and it's different than the, you know, just getting in the boat and go fishing the same docks, the same grass areas, lily pad areas, things like that, you know? That's I think there's more adventure in river fishing, which which I totally dig. I just recently, this past year, started venturing out on rivers. I know Jay's got a little bit more experience than me on rivers, but I think that's a unique thing about it, man. So I dig it. I dig it. I completely agree with you. It's, it's ever-changing. You never know what you're going to see while you're on the river. I mean, we've had bald eagles follow us down the river for two or three miles, Staying and piggybacking right with us, nice. uh, and then seeing river otters and deer and turkey and all the other stuff. It's it's awesome. I mean, yeah. Definitely, man. And it ultimately, makes you a better paddler. Like you yeah. have to learn how to read currents, read water, understand graphs, and you know for your river gauges, water gauge graphs, tables. And I, I love to take people, but. I always try to let them know what we're about to get into. Sure. And I'll a newbie down something, you know, tough. Right. Uh, but it's a blast. If you guys ever make it down here to the Southeast, I'll put you on them. <laughs> well, I'm uh, sure we're going. Yeah. We're going to end this podcast now. I'm going to go load up the truck and I'm heading South. <laughs> yeah. Jay, I'll pick you up on the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me get my yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know if you know this, but it was like negative 50 here with the windshields last week. And now, now what was it today? Like 40 or something? Yeah. It was I mean, like 41. Yeah. It's like summer out here. Yeah. You got, you got to love Chicago weather, man. You know, one yeah, day it'll really. be, one day it'll be 70 and the next day it's snowing. You just never know. So. Yeah, yeah 40 degrees is a uh, t-shirt and shorts weather. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny, man. That's um, cool, man. Like, you know, I totally get, you know, I mean, I'm, uh, the whole river thing about, you know, just, uh, you know, being out there, the connection with, with everything. Matter of fact, I think in your Warner ad, you did something about that. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I feel like the same way, you know, just like you're so you're closer to the water, you know, wildlife is everywhere. Um, you don't see many people out there, which is cool. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, but it's like, you know, it, it's a very calming feeling. That's what it is for me too. It's like, it just feels better, you know, especially, I mean, even on days you don't really catch any fish even, you know, it's like, Hey, those days happen. We all know it. Um, right. you know, and, and you just like, and you can just take it in. I mean, days like that, I just sit there across my arms, just like, all right, whatever. You know, yeah. <laughs> Stare it up and just like, all right, let's see what, like, oh, yeah, it's a yeah. It's bird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So let's, let's get into this. We got, we got to talk bonafide. So I know you're obviously on the bonafide team, um, but you got some involvement with the company as well, correct? Yes. Um, uh, just recently this year, they've asked me to step on board and be the, the bonafide team tournament and social media guru, as they're calling it. Okay. So I'll be linking in with all the guys that fish tournaments all over the country, and I'll be doing social media posts, trying to give the spotlight to those guys. Um, Jody Queen, he just fished down yeah. at, at uh, the Ten Invitational, and you know he he had a good he had a good showing down there. He he did actually fish for the the top ten the last couple of days. Um, but I know Hans Nutz, uh, and some of the other guys that were there from our days at Confluence. Okay. Um, so that's how I linked in with them. And then me and Luther, we just connected past and it was like a 20 year old friend that I met for the first time. You know, it was, it was a great connection, a, a great bond formed instantly it was it was a, a brotherhood that instantly formed actually right here in my backyard um the first time we met person to person but we talked a lot socially but uh yeah i was uh, i kind of knew what was going on way before anybody else did sure and then as soon as they gave me the green light to to let this thing go 
I jumped in with both feet. This was 2017. Uh, it was February time frame when I kind of knew all the pieces that were coming together and I saw the, the first round of prototypes and whatnot. And then in about late March, April time frame, I, I, I jumped on board and told, told Jake Fuller at the time that I wanted to be 100% committed to the team. Uh, I would do anything that you guys needed me to do. And he just said, you know, keep it quiet. And if you want to come over here and help us out anytime you got free time, come on. So I made it a, it was a priority. I talked to my wife. I kind of told her what was going on and the direction I wanted to go with it. And she was all about it. Um, that whole year, 2017, she was like, I want you to go try your best to go chase your dream. Yeah. So I did. And I was fortunate enough to, to be in, in the, the opening videos, the opening photo shoots, all that took place at my house. And then I was blessed by Luther. He asked me to go to ICAST. Nice. And that was my first trip to ICAST. And it was phenomenal. And since then, it's just been a whirlwind. You know, I was, I was dug in deep and I, I work in a normal, <laughs> I'm a quality engineer by trade. And fortunate, my job's only two exits up from Confluence. I mean, excuse me, Bonafide. Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would leave there and I would go to Bonafide and I would start building boats out and just volunteer my time to try to get production up and running so we so we would meet the commit that, that Luther set out. And I, I can remember I had my hands involved in like the first 30 boats that went out the door and there was dealers sitting there waiting on the boats to yeah. for us to build out. It was so much fun. And I'm heavily involved in uh, the R&D side at Bonafide. Okay. Being so, such good friends with Hans, um, him, him being the, the main designer of the boats. Uh, uh, we've got like a six, seven year long, real real close friendship. And and we just bounce ideas off each other. And, and he... he He's really good about listening and, and he wants full buy in. So it's been a blast. I mean, it's been a dream come true to be this involved with a company and this hands on and not be a true employee of them. Sure. Sure. You still got your freedom and you're not tied down, so to speak. But I, I think that says a lot because Bonafide's one of Bonafide's slogans is live the story you want to tell. And it sounds like you're living that story, my man. So I applaud you for that, man. I applaud you for that. I can say I'm jealous. If they need extra help down there, I'm willing to move, relocate, because, like I said, it was negative 50. It's nice and warm down there by you. I'm on my way. <laughs> but but uh, so you, you brought up the design aspects of the boats. Um, you know, maybe what, what are a couple of favorite features for you when it comes to the Bonafide lineup? Uh, so I, I, I guess I'd, I'll break it down quickly as I can by the three boats. Sure. Um, starting with the SS-127. I actually got blood into that boat, you know, I mean, so the whole boat is – is really special, but what really sets that boat apart, I think, um, besides the stability, everybody knows how stable that boat is. It, it's insanely stable. Um, but the seat yeah. is second. Uh, I mean, getting 10 inches off the deck and still being ultra comfortable. We, we spent so much time trying to get ergonomics correct sure. for that and, and still keeping the boat performing at optimum efficiency that it could. Um, I, so think, that, I would say that's probably my favorite feature of the 127. And, and I'm right there in line with you, and it's funny. Um, Jay and I were both at the Chicago Fishing Show um, two weekends ago, and uh, we were in the booth with our local paddle shop up here who we support all the time. And when I was talking to people about the SS-127, that was the big thing that a lot of people were like, oh, you're right. That seat is a little higher, you know, compared to some of the other boats on the market. And, um, you know, we would put the boat down off the racks and onto the floor so people could try it. And they're like, 
Man, and, and even the older guys, like, that was key. They're like, I could get up and down out of this seat um, compared to, like, a new canoe or an old town or something along that lines. Um, I mean, me, the first time I paddled it, um, that was the thing for me. I'm a tall dude. I'm 6'4", you know. So, you know, if I'm sitting way down low getting up and down out of that seat because I'm, I'm big on sight fishing, um, that, that was huge for me. That was huge. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm 100% in line with you, my friend on that one. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but you know, I think that, I think that's clutch because a lot of people don't think about that when it comes to, um, you know, seat height, so to speak and comfortability when you're on the water all day long. And I don't know about you, but I know, uh, when I'm out there paddling, fishing, I leave my seat up high all day long. Granted, I'm not usually fishing rivers with rapids and things like that where I got to put my seat down, but it's comfortable with it in the high position and you're paddling along and it doesn't affect, you know, the way that thing, you know, paddles at all, in my opinion. So it, it really does it. And I've, it's funny you said that I've, I've had the high, the seat in the high position, and I've ran class two rapids and the boat's just there. It's, it's, I don't even think about it. You know, I'm like, Oh, Oh, oh I wasn't. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. sure. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's clutch, man. I think that's clutch. Um, so I know you were going to, what about the other two, the RS 11, seven and the one Oh seven. All right. So the, the one Oh seven, what, what I like a lot about that boat is, I'm going to go back. Yeah, I like the stability. Um, people see a, a 10 foot seven boat and they're like, this thing's going to be swirly and all over the place. It, it tracks really well for what it is. Um, the, the hood, the, the bow hood is, is really nice. You can actually take it all the way off by just squeezing the front pins. Um, but that, that boat is super stable. Uh, I was doing a demo this past fall and a guy was like, what can this thing really do? So I started cavitating it left or yeah, just cavitating left or right and bringing water inside the hole. And then I walked the whole boat and he's like, that's pretty impressive. I said, well, let me try something. But I got one more thing I want to do. And I, the, the seat was in the low position, but I, I actually did a headstand in like 20 foot of water and the boat didn't look. And then we redid that same move in the lifestyle video that we shot for Bonafide this past summer. Nice. And it was that right there. I was like, man, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's something you don't see every day. <laughs> that's for sure. And then RS, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just jump. That is my favorite boat. Okay. I, I love it. RS for what it, it is phenomenal. I, I've ran some really big flooded rivers with it. it. It's a machine. It can handle anything you throw at it. Uh, we we ran class two plus. Um, we had a wave train. Yeah. With about almost close to three foot waves from from the trough to the tip and the boat just punched right through it. I had a break all the way back to the seat, and the whole boat cleaned out extremely quick. By the next wave, the boat was cleared out of water. Um, it's stable. It is ultra fast. Uh, the seat position is just perfect. I don't even put the seat down in the low position. I leave it in the higher position. Uh, it's not as high as the SS, but it's still super easy to get in and out of. You can walk around in the boat. You can turn around and grab anything you want to out of your black pack if needed. Um, it's easy to access the hood up front. That is my river boat. That's my number one right now. Uh, as we're speaking about it, I'm staring at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I, I have only seen photographs. Um, I got a text message this morning from uh, our good friends over at Rocktown saying that their shipment is leaving Monday. And uh, I, my response, well, actually, 
I didn't even respond versus text or via text. I picked up the phone and I tried to call Travis right away. He ignored my call and I left him a voicemail. I was like, don't ever send me a text message like this and tease me. You know, I said, you need to answer my call after you send me a text like that. So then uh, we ended up chatting. I was like, you got a cool hand blue on the truck, right? He's like, yep. I said, you got it Mark sold, right? And he's like, yep. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I'm like everything I've seen about it, I'm super impressed with. And, and that, that's going to be my riverboat, you know, because of the videos I've seen that you've put out and a few of the other guys. I mean, that thing is just, just awesome. And, you know, that goes back to me getting into some river fishing with Jay, you know, Jay fishes out of the Jackson Liska usually when uh when we're fishing rivers you know and i see how well that performs and i take my 127 out you know it kind of keeps up but it's a little sluggish compared to that little little liska but i'm i'm anxious to put that thing in the water regardless and then i'm going to be paddling i'm going to be paddling past mr jackson over there <laughs> well wait a second <clears throat> wait isn't there a sit-in there... kayak that you can also stand in coming hey. out Hey, you're jumping ahead in the show notes, my friend. <laughs> we haven't got there yet. We're going to get there. We're... But I want to ask a question. So this is question. All right, so let's get into it. All right, thoughts on the EX-123. Go ahead. Ask your question, Mr. Randall. No, I mean, the, the question, I'm guessing that you had uh, a big hand in doing some of the testing with it. Um, and I read that you can stand in this thing as well. It doesn't really look like you can. I mean, obviously from the, the design, but and I thought that was real intriguing. Um, I mean, and it's the weight is insane. Is yeah, 50 pounds. Um, I think or 50, 52 pounds. I think, you know. But um, I mean, what are your thoughts on this new yak? I mean, this thing is like it impressed me. I thought it was cool. And wait, from wait, the river side, wait, wait, what did you just say? Yeah. <laughs> I, this part will be. This part is gonna be censored. I'm just. I just want to clarify. Can you say that again? <laughs> We're gonna have music over this part. <laughs> you know, you're just gonna see my mouth doing this. Yeah. Like, what are you saying? Like what? Like I don't know. Yeah, I think it looks cool. It looks no. neat. It looks like a great like riverboat, especially. Well, and uh, that... what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, what do you gotta say? I was gonna say I. What? JD posted a picture of it the other day, and my thought on it was is. Uh, It'd be a great, like, overnight boat, you know, floating rivers. And, yeah. like, that's what I'm looking at to get out of it. But Look, I'm I'm right in – well, right. And I'm right in line with you is, you know, I, I saw the same stuff that you could uh, essentially stand and fish out of this thing. So what are your thoughts, my man? Give us the inside scoop. Yeah, so uh, it's the EX-123. We've dubbed it the SUV because uh, it's, it's a do-it-all. Uh, you're you're correct. You are going to be able to stand in this thing. It's it's going to be ultra simple to stand in it. It's going to have still the stadium style seating in it. Um, but the cool thing about a lot of people don't think oh, it's it's a sit in. Well, yeah, it is, but it's a hybrid sit in. So you got that open cockpit. So that's great because one, you're you're feet when you stand up are actually below the water line which makes it insanely stable and and the edges of the boat where they curl into the cockpit are rounded so if you have to brace and flex your legs out it's nice and pleasing on your on your cast area that way there's no sharp edges of the plastic you know digging into your leg or anything like that gotcha uh, but what 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 also is really nice is being that open cockpit, you can easily store your rods in there if you run a rapid, especially when you're transporting the boat, and and the boat is insanely light. It's it's we're we're coming in at 52 pounds, um, and that's that's just how it's going to sit. It's going to be super easy to carry. I put one on my shoulder and I walked about halfway across the factory floor with it. It balanced really nice. Um, and then I don't know if you saw the pictures today, Brian, uh, that Luther threw up. Yeah. But I, I shared one. It, it, we actually showed off the cockpit, or, yep. the, or not the cockpit, but the dashboard. Really nice shot of it for the first time today. 
Um, it's, it's got the same style latch system as the RS does. Um, and then there's some cup holders and tool holders. That thing's completely removable if you want it to be, <clears throat> to open up a little bit more room to have your dog in there or a small kid. But what really puts that boat over the top, and it's something I was really happy that Hans was able to do. We talked about it in the, the R&D phases, is he was able to do the rear tank well the, the way he always dreamt of. Uh, it is high, and it's perfect, though, because it goes back to what you were saying, Brian, that it's a great boat for for camping out of. Yeah. And you can that it's a false floor so to speak in the back the rear tank well is okay you've got two just and you unlatch the hinge it, the, the, the rear tank well the cover area hinges from the center in the back and it lifts up and it opens up this enormous amount of room just to put dry bags to put stuff sacks to put your sleeping bag in there you can you can pack food down in there then up top you can have your black pack or your cooler whatever you need and you can take off for a couple three or four days out of that boat that's awesome man that's awesome so and that's that's 12 foot three inches right Mm -hmm. yeah 52 pounds 12 foot boat i mean that's just that's just nuts man and no i I think it's go ahead i think it's 29 and a half inches wide too yeah that's pretty thin yeah it's nest (laughs) and it's it's got Oh, go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say it's got the same. Does it have the same catamaran style hull as the other boats? It does. It does have the hybrid catamaran hull. It's a little bit. Uh, I'll say it's a little bit more tamed down. Okay. But it's still there and still distinct. Uh, that that is the key to some of our stability. Sure. But the the bow with the nice hard keel line. That's what's going to really help the tracking pick up in that boat. And it is, a, it, it can be a rocket ship. Um, and we've dubbed it the SUV because it's set up for fishing, for wreck paddling, for expedition, or for camping out of. And it, it's just a great all around boat. It's yeah. going to hit a lot of different marketplaces. No, I, and I think that's clutch, man. I mean, I think it's key. I mean, the, you look at a bonafide compared to like your normal average run run of the mill kayaks fishing kayaks and it's you know bonafide's got a pretty unique look some people love it some people hate it and i think that's the thing about that ex 123 is it's it's got an even more unique look you know and that's what kind of when i first saw it i was like what the heck is this and then when i started really looking at it i'm like that's a pretty sweet little rig, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, you know, like Jay said and brought up, you know, the fact that you could stand and fish out of that thing, I mean, that's going to be huge, huge. And do you know offhand what the MSRP is going to be on that yet? or? I do not. All right. I, I, I'm not going to say it's around that nine ninety nine price point. Okay. But I'm hundred percent sure i i thought that's what i saw but i wasn't sure and i think you know at that price point i mean you know depend and it all boils down to what you're going to be fishing you know if you're going to be running rivers it's going to be a hard decision between the 11.7 and the 123 but um you know obviously my fleet of cool hand blues is going to be growing as soon as uh that rolls around but uh no i dig it so so I mentioned, go ahead, go ahead, man. I didn't mean to cut you off. We're shipping them. Uh, we're, we're projected shipping the EX-123 the 1st of March. Yeah, that's what I saw. That's what I saw. Yeah. So I mentioned Cool Hand Blue. What's your favorite color out of the lineup? Cool Hand Blue. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. See that, Jay? Yes. You got nothing. <laughs> I get, no, I think it's a cool color too. I like the orange too, though. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like that. It's like a, that burnt orange. It's a really cool color. It's it's mondo orange. Sure. Get it right. <laughs> no, I think it looks cool. No, I like, I, you know, I, I dig the, the orange too. Like... It, if I wasn't going blue, I'd definitely go the orange. I'm not a yeah. huge fan of the gray, but uh, 
my daughter loves a light blue color. I forget the name of that one off the top of my head, but endless summer. Yeah, that's what it is. But uh, if he didn't know this would be a test. This is really a test. Yeah, I just failed, Luke, man. I just failed. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Luther's going to listen to this and be like, what kind of clowns are you talking to on this podcast over here? <laughs> yeah, I, if I can say one thing, too, like, as far as the design of the boats and the names of the boats, uh, I kind of thought that was brilliant. Yeah. It, you know, because the first thing I thought of when I saw these kayaks, I'm like, they were like battleships. Oh, yeah. You know, they, you know, and I'm, I'm like, and then they're like SS, you know. 117 SS, you know, 127. I mean, it's like, you know, it, it all makes sense and it works good. So, as far as the, you know, the marketing aspects goes, I mean, it, you guys are like dead on, you know, as far as that goes. Um, you know, and plus they, they're a good looking boat. They definitely are. I mean, you know, Brian doesn't know, but I'm kind of looking at his while he's on it. Uh. <laughs> you know? It's cool. I like it. It's, it's a neat boat. I mean, it, that's what's cool about the kayaks, though. They're all different. Yeah. So, they're all, and, I mean, and that's the thing, man. Uh, that, I think that's something we always promote. It doesn't matter what boat you're in. Uh, as long as you're on the water, getting outside, enjoying the outdoors, that's all that matters. You know? Absolutely. And yet, you know, yeah, we all got our favorites. You know, not going to lie. Bonafide. But, uh, you know, um, it's cool. So, uh, here's the one question, and I think this is a question that... Uh, Everybody wants to know, and I'm sure you know what it is. And, uh, you know, I've heard mixed things amongst the internet, you know, gurus on the Facebook pages and everything. And I know uh, just from the past, uh, Luther said he wasn't going to make a, a pedal drive kayak. True or false? Is it possible? Will it ever happen? Your thoughts. I think most definitely it will happen. Okay. Uh, sometime. Uh, we always have our finger on the, the pulse of the industry. Sure. We're always watching and trying to project ahead. Uh, so with that, I would say, yes, we will probably 100% get in that game one day. Right. Uh, we are definitely made it known and we are a paddling company right uh but when we do bring something out it will be from from how i know luther and how his amazing engineer gear mind works it will be something special it, it, it will be truly unique and very effective and efficient and i think the boat that goes with it will, will also complement it very well well, and I think I heard something, and, and again, this could just be hearsay or rumor, but uh, I thought somewhere along the line somebody had said that, um, you know, if you guys were to build a pedal drive, you would build a boat around the actual drive system and not try to necessarily retrofit it into the existing lineups. I, I think for a pedal drive boat to be operating really well it has to the boat has to be designed with the drive in mind yeah because it's it's hard to retrofit a boat uh to accept a drive system it works and sure. it gets you there but i think for the boat to be like 100 percent or 110 percent, you've got to have that drive in mind to begin with no and i i think that's genius um you know because i think uh, a lot of, not a lot, but there are some kayak companies out there who have kind of tried to go back and retrofit a drive system into their boats, and they they had a lot of issues with it, and it was nothing but problems. And that's where I was kind of coming from with the question, you know, because, you know, I, I would hate to see, you know, Bonafide fall down that path, so to speak. Um, and when I heard that, uh, comment, you know, I thought that was perfect. You know, uh, you, you, you have to build a boat around that drive, so to speak. Um, so I think that's huge. I think that's huge. So there's a possibility, ladies and gentlemen, it may happen. Not today, not tomorrow, but it might happen. There is hope. <laughs> 
So, well, let's jump into, into Yak Attack. You're the Southeast Regional Team Manager for Yak Attack, correct? Uh, um, so, how did you get involved with Yak Attack? I mean, I know Yak Attack and Bonafide kind of go hand in hand, right? They do. They do, with Luther driving both ships. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, I've been using Yak Attack since I started kayak fishing. Um, I, I love their products. I've always been a firm believer in them. I mean, honestly, I didn't get on until 2017. I just, I was just a believer. Sure. And it didn't come to me. Uh, and when I met Luther, we gave each other a high five, a bro hug, and we talked for a minute, and he's like, you need to contact John Hipshire like tonight. Uh, we need to get you on our regional team. I said, okay, thank you so much. You know, uh, um, it kind of blew me away. I, I didn't know really what to say. And so all that happened within like a week's time period. I signed on and it's been unbelievable since then. I wrote, I'm currently about to write some articles for them. Uh, I've been involved with several R&D projects with the guys. Okay. Um, release dripper rings. I had a, a hand in that. Uh, I don't know. Have you guys seen the Yak Attack AR2? That is um, I have. I actually got one right here beside me. Uh, I, I prototyped that for them. Uh, let's see. The, uh, the Omega Pros, I was prototyped that, and yeah, I, I, I love their stuff, like I said, and they they threw, uh, they contacted a few people, and they wanted to know who would be willing to help out with the team, and I was honored that, that John and Luther offered me that position. Derek Ekin, he's actually out of yep. your neck of the woods. Yep. Um, he's the national team director. Uh, I'm really good friends with Derek. Uh, we have a super re relationship. Uh, it, was, it was awesome when he came down here last year because we got to spend the whole day together and eat lunch and just catch up. But he's really great as our national director. But currently, I, I do have the Southeast, so I'm in charge of Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. And I don't really look at it as a, a, t a, a d team director or manager's position. I try to take it on as more of a mentor. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I help elevate my team or my guys. How can we come together as a cohesive unit and be the best that we all possibly can be? Because there's everybody under the moon on that team, from Ron Champion to Chad Hoover to – Cameron Gatlin, you know, and everybody in, in between, all type of manufacturers, and, and it's awesome. I mean, Yak Attack is not only the manufacturing facility, but the team itself is, it, it's a family. Yeah. Uh, we're very supportive of each other. We, we can, at any time, it's an open door with me. Call me. I, I have time for you. It, it's not a big deal. Sure. Um, and right now, I think I'm sitting on about 38 team members. Oh wow! Which is which is the largest out of all the regions. And, sure. Uh, it's it, it's it's been fun. It's been a blast. And there's a lot of cool stuff ahead with all that. Um, a lot of stuff in the works. So uh, yeah, keep your eye on the team. Nice. Yeah, I know. I, th I think that's key, man. You you made a, a key statement there that, you know, you're not a manager. You're more of a mentor. You guys are more of like a cohesive unit and a family. And I know, um, you know, Jay, obviously, he's on the Jackson Pro staff. And that's something he always talks about with me is, you know, him being with Jackson. It's like that family feeling on a team, man. That's like, that's key. You know, he's like... If it wasn't like that, I, I wouldn't stick around. And I know, obviously, I've I've spoke with other uh, Jackson guys, you know, knowing Jay, and um, they all say the same thing, man. And I think that's that's one key thing about the, the kayak community in general is it's all one big happy family. It doesn't matter what team you're on, things like that. But I'm glad to see that, uh, 
you know, Yak Attack is right in line with that, you know. I mean, I use Yak Attack products. I, you know, to be honest, I don't know much of the team members other than, uh, you know, the key players that you obviously had just mentioned, Derek, Chad Hoover, you know, Ron Champion, all those guys. So, um, no, I think that's cool, man. I think that's cool that you treat it like that and it's not uh, – you know, just you standing over everybody's shoulder pointing fingers, you know? So I think, I think that's clear. That's key, man. That's key. And you don't come off like that type of guy, you know? So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. That's very kind of you. Uh, I, I would, I would like to say one thing. I, I feel that my point in the, in the, my career, I would say in the fishing industry, kayak fishing industry, I feel like I could step away today and be completely happy with with how I tried to handle stuff and, and I always every day I always try to put others before myself. Sure. Um, just stay super humble, and I think that's what makes the team so well. You know, so good they click so well. Um, we're all grown men. We don't need somebody micromanaging yeah. us. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, and I think that's just it, you know. There's uh there's been a lot of talk lately about, you know, pro staffs and, and and sponsorships and stuff going on in the kayak fishing community and uh you know, obviously there's some issues here and there. We're not gonna get into that, but uh you know, I, I think that's key. If you can find uh, uh another family, so to speak, rather than just another product to shove down somebody's throat you know that's key you know it's got to be something you believe in uh you know and, and everything along those lines i don't, I don't want to go down that way but uh you know but uh no it's uh you know like you said you uh you, you're open to people and that's that's how we connected you know i i had a question and i didn't know who to turn to and ask you know i got a lot of people around me with various opinions and uh I thought going to an outside source uh, for the question I had, uh, you seemed like you were that guy that would answer it. So on here, I'm going to say thank you for that. Um, you know, and I think it's cool because I've had other questions and talked to other people in the community, and I think that's what makes our community so great is everybody's open to uh, you know answer questions and things of that nature for sure. So. Yeah, totally. So, didn't mean to sidetrack away from Yak Attack, but uh, so, um, you know, you mentioned some of the stuff you've worked on. So, let's talk about a couple of the new things that's coming out through Yak Attack. I know you guys just released some new, uh, you know, uh, straps for hauling. Uh, obviously, the new Zuka tubes out, and then uh, the new battery by Nakwa. Yeah, yeah, so all that stuff is just jam up. The, the Zuka tube is a, you know, we, we had the Zuka back in the day, and we wanted to revamp it, make it uh, user-friendly on both both ends of the Zuka tube. And, it, it's, and, and, of course, add the new the lock and load base system to it. So it's super easy to move around, or if you want to troll, you can flare it out with just one push of the button. And then the the battery by Nakwa is that little thing's a, a champ. Uh, I've I've had a Nakwa for quite a while um, since 2017. I, I bought my first one to run my Ray Marine Dragonfly Seven. I I have the the, the 4.5 amp hour one. Okay. And it, it's the real small one, but the one that we're selling through Yak Attack, it's branded by Yak Attack, is the 10 amp hour one. And it will it'll power any graph out there. It's it, it won't overload itself. The charging system it's it's all plug and play. It's super easy to set up and run and install. Uh, it's the most user friendly battery I've ever seen, and it's all waterproof and sealed, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you were running like uh like you know I know you run a, a dragonfly. Uh, say a guy was running like a, a Lawrence or a hummingbird with like side scan or something. How long do you think that battery would last uh, on one full charge on the 10 amp? The 10 amp hour will run probably all day, uh, probably two days. Okay. Okay. Before you 
they have to charge it back up. Uh, I know I ran my my smaller version, no side scan on the Dragonfly Seven. Um, I ran it for about three and a half days on okay. a single charge. That's clutch, man. That's clutch, and that battery is super tiny. So I mean, obviously when you're when you're paddling a kayak, keeping the weight down is key, you know. So I think that's huge. That's definitely huge. Um, one thing I thought of earlier today as I was driving around, because uh, obviously uh, a lot of our listeners know I'm a I'm a man of many plastic baits and lots of tackle and stuff like that. Will they ever make a larger black pack? Do you know? Has that ever I've, been thought of? I've, or, I've noticed a few people have kicked it around to run the larger size Plano boxes. Sure. Um, Gene did a video where he, you know, cut out a little bit of the one of the two sides to get the big the big Planos down in there. I don't know. Uh, I've never really asked Luther that. <laughs> Uh, I'll ask him though. <laughs> Wr- write that down for me. Let me know. <laughs> Just kidding, man. No, it was something I thought about because uh, I mean, I I I put six thirty seven hundred boxes in mine, and uh, you know, I'm looking right now, and I could probably fit six more back there. I might have to dual ba- black pack it. Jay Jay knows how ridiculous it is, but. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about that today. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they'll ever come out with a bigger one. That would be kind of cool. But, uh, you know. That's a good question. Uh, I, I'm actually hopefully we'll see Luther tomorrow. Uh, Thursday is my day that I always go to Bonafide and just check in what's going on, what can I do, sure. need me for something. Uh, so I, as far as I know, I know he's in town today. I don't. I, hopefully he'll be here tomorrow I'm heading back to Virginia. Corner. But, uh, Basket. Corner them. Be like those boys over at Paddle and Finn want a bigger black pack. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too funny. No, it's cool, man. I, I dig it. Um, you know, I run a cell block for my depth finder. Uh, I got the black pack, uh, Zuka tube. I'm trying to think. I Oh, I got, I got the Roto Grip back there. It's still needs to go on the boat i've been slacking on that i know jay uses some of that stuff because correct me if i'm wrong jay but doesn't jackson they you buy a boat and it comes with a zuka rod holder right um no um i'm actually forgetting the name right now uh but it's one of the yak attack ones yeah yeah i didn't know if it was uh, the omega I or the zuka <laughs> fired fired yeah. You know, it's like, you know, for me, it's like, it, you know, I haven't trolled actively yet. So that's where those would come in for me. Sure. Sure. You know, no, I know when, uh, when, uh, we unpacked the Kusa at the Chicago boat show, I want to say it was the Omega. I could be wrong though. I, yeah. The Omega's come on the boats. Yeah. yeah. All yeah, right. No, those are pretty nice. Yeah. Those are real nice. Yeah. No, I thought they were slick, man. And I, uh, you know the unlock feature uh you know pulling it in, on and off the track system was was super easy i dig that new style that they got on it so uh, yeah, you can you can use the omega actually and the zuka tube uh me i was hanging out with chad hoover last year uh this time last year actually at the tennessee boat and fishing expo and he's like hey man you know what i bet you can do this and you, you take, so it's the Omega Pro or the Zuka Tube Pro with or the Zuka Tube with the big extension on it, bigger extension on it. You unlock everything and you can almost do like an, almost a U shape with it and point your tube straight down and 90 it off the side of your boat. Right. You only got a stakeout holder. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. saw you posted that, I think, uh, or was talking about that on your Facebook page. You did a live feed. And you were talking about uh, some different features on that. And I thought that was key. I would have never thought of that. You know, I know a lot of guys will, you know, stuff it down a scupper hole or something like that. But I like the thought of it, you know, being off to the side and out of the way. I thought that was that was a cool use for that rod holder. Just, you know, putting it on there as a stakeout pole for sure. No, that's super clutch. 
So, uh, this is another one of my favorites, Z-Man Bates. What's the affiliation, brother? Yeah, South Carolina based, Ladson. They're about uh, three hours from me. And I, I hung out with, with Z-Man at ICAST 2017, kind of got to know some of them, met Joey, and then reconnected with them at the Bassmaster Classic last year. Okay. Here. And it was awesome. Uh, we just we hit it off, and Joey was running around at that time, so I, I hung out with Ryan, and uh, he's actually used to live up here in the upstate, so we had a whole lot to talk about, and I let him know how involved I was with Bonafide, and he's like, hey, man, it's a win-win. It only makes sense. I said, oh, okay. I said, let's, let's do it. So, uh yeah, we were able to line that deal up, and nice. and it's been amazing. Uh, they they are they are extremely innovative. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And, and as I'm, I I listen to Drew's podcast, and and Drew puts their baits through the paces for sure. Hey, but I'm disappointed, man. Drew's craw isn't Drew's Drew's craw. It's some other Drew. So we gave him a hard time about that. <laughs> No, I'm uh, I uh, I'm a big fan of Z-Man. If uh, if you can't tell by all those bags up there on the wall, you know, for you guys watching uh, the YouTube. But uh, yeah, I I love their. I mean, uh, if you listen to Drew's podcast, uh, you know, I always talk about it. I love fishing crayfish, man, and um, I always tell the story being up north, man, caught 50 fish on one plastic bait. And to me, my mind was just like blown, you know, cause you know, growing up, uh, you know, even, you know, before I found Z man, it was just like, you know, you get three fish maybe out of a, you know, power bait, whatever, you know, not to knock those guys, but, um, you know, the, the, the longevity that you can get out of one plastic bait, and uh it, it's funny because uh one of our listeners was like you know if you can get so many fish out of z-man why do you have so many i said because they make too many damn colors dude you know <laughs> not my fault <laughs> so but uh you know i think that's key man uh you know so with that being said what what's your favorite z-man style bait what do you love tossing the most out of their lineup number one Chatterbait. I'm a yeah. huge chatterbait thrower. I'm a finesse fisherman, but I'll throw a chatterbait in the swamp and on the rivers uh, quite often. I always have one tied on. Um, nice. I'm a big fan of green pumpkin, black and blues, uh, the black and red I like a whole lot. Uh, I like breaking brim. That's another real good one, especially for for, for me in the spring and uh, summer, that breaking brim's real nice. Sure. But... There's just something about that black and blue I just can't get enough yeah. of. I don't know what it is. but And then right behind that, I put these bad boys oh, on. Oh, yeah. So that's that's the diesel minnows. Um, I throw that on as a trailer, actually. Yep. And that, that thumping of that big paddle tail mixed with the swinging of the blade and the skirt, man, they, they can't hardly resist it. <laughs> Uh, put, my biggest freshwater fish was was actually caught on that setup. It was a green pumpkin chatterbait with a red bone uh, diesel minnow trail in it. Nice. And it was a 16 pound bow fan. Oh, nice. Up here in South Carolina, and it was a fight like no other. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, and I actually. Talking about the longevity of the baits, I I was able to throw that entire lure over a three day span and caught. Uh, I think I personally caught about twenty five bowfin uh, over that time frame, and these things have teeth like a pike. Yeah, um, and, and they will bite you <laughs> very quickly. J but they're so much fun. Jay just Jay just sat up in his chair a little bit. Yeah. He heard teeth like a pike. Jay's yeah, a big, uh, Jay's a big pike fisherman. So, um, but, I like dangerous fish. Yeah, I mean, we uh, 
me and him both will fish for pike up here in the north and it's the same way you know i run the same if i'm not running uh the diesel minnow on the back end of a chatter uh usually i'm running a turbo craw as well those craws flopping in the water behind that chatterbait man is is super sexy but uh yeah i uh i dig it man i dig it for sure um what were you gonna say jay i didn't mean to cut you off no no oh. um no i mean you know chatterbaits are where it's at especially the z-mans they're pretty much good for anything i've noticed you know that's a good that's a nice bait but um yeah i was gonna ask you this uh um paddle tail up or down when you're putting the the diesel minnow on the back of your chatterbait down down man it must be a north thing <laughs> we're just different i guess but uh we're like good different though yeah <laughs> <laughs> to be honest i really don't think it makes that big of a difference you know um but uh you know i know uh drew you know brought that up that you know it's just more natural with it down which makes sense you know so yeah, guess, it looks like a fish yeah i guess yeah. it's just a northern thing we like doing things upside down and backwards you know so. yeah he has a nice way of calling you a dummy yeah <laughs> He's like, well, it looks like a fish with sail down. Yeah. You're like, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, too funny. Uh, so let's talk power pull. I know Jay's got one. I'm in the market for one. Uh, what's your thoughts on power pull? Like, why why do you feel you need it on the back of your boats? So fishing saltwater, the lakes, when I'm on a lake, and the swamp especially, I love my power pole. Um, it's it's super fast. It's it's very easy to operate. Yeah. Um, now they're making the ultra light spikes. Um, I run my setup is with the battery pack on it. I, I don't have it hardwired in. Uh, I think that's a lot more simple and sure. easy to operate. And and with our boats, mine's currently set up on my one twenty seven. Uh, the I have the eight foot spike. It can fit all the way down in the hull of the boat with no problem. So transporting it is easy. Uh, I'll, I'll rock the motor forward while I transport, and then when I get to my fishing location, I drop it down and and rock and roll with it. And just it's it's a good tool. It's it's a very effective, really nice tool. I tried to use it in some of the rivers around here once, but our rivers are so rocky and. I fish a good many rivers with rapids in them, and it just – I couldn't get it to bite like I wanted to. Sure. So when I'm in the river, I, I use an anchor wizard. Okay. And I, I absolutely love the anchor wizards. But, yeah, the power poles, that's where it's at. Uh, it'll I, – I love it in the salt water because I can pull up on a, a, a an edge of grass or I know where an oyster rake is and I can power pole down – lock myself in and I'm good. I can sit there and just fish that whole grass line or the whole oyster rake and um, don't have to worry really about what the boat's going to do. Right on, right on. Yeah, I learned my lesson the hard way. Uh, Jay and I were out fishing. It was like 20 mile an hour winds and, uh, you know, Jay, Jay plopped his power pole down and Needless to say, I kept having to pick my paddle up every five minutes to paddle back in and get in the location. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, this is, you know, so I'm going to get on that. I'm going to get on that. So, um, Werner paddles, man, they just came out with that lever lock, uh, system. What are your thoughts on that? And then I know, uh, Jay mentioned it earlier, but you just shot a video for them, uh, you know, for their paddles and stuff, which, uh, was pretty, pretty stellar so uh yeah i love, love warner it's it goes back to the whole family thing uh they are very very good about listening to you they care about you they make you feel very warm and welcome to the to the family and you can pick up the phone and call those guys anytime for anything um i, I i've gotten really good friends with several of them up there and they asked me if I wanted to get involved 
uh, with the lever lock and prototype it and spend some time with it and get to really know it and provide them with reports and photos and feedback of it. And I fell right in love with it. Um, it's, it's very user friendly. It's very easy and intuitive to use. Just flip the lever and you can adjust it every which way, but loose. Sure. Um, it, you know, I, I'm, I currently run the one at 240 to 260. Okay. Uh, because, because of the bona fide, uh, I, I typically run at 250 with a 30 degree offset. Um, when I'm in hard white water where I know I'm going to be running a lot of class twos or yeah, class twos, I'll kick the, the feathering up to 45 degrees. Oh, wow. And, and uh, so when I'm in the high seat, seat position, I'm at 250. When I'm in the low seat position, I go down to 240. And when I stand up, I actually keep the paddle at 240. Um, because it's just, I, I initially thought, oh man, a paddle at 260 standing up is going to be something else. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I, I run a, a Werner 250 and, uh, I know when I stand up and try to paddle, it's like, it's just a little too long, you know, but, uh, I think that's a great point that you brought up with the lever lock system, you know, depending on your seat heights and, or, or the type of water you're paddling, you can adjust on the fly super easy, you know, and you're not just set with one set length. Um, I know I was playing with one at uh, the Chicago Fishing Show uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was just like, man, this is, this is pretty sweet. And, uh, you know, I was talking to one of the guys at the shop there, and he's like, got to get one. And I'm like, great, you know, there goes another 300 bones. <laughs> but uh you know it is sweet like you said especially if if you're a person that's uh you know like jay's instance you know he's got uh, a big boat for lakes and a river boat you know you're not always going to want to use that same paddle if you can adjust on the fly like that um just to suit the different boats you might be paddling in for your different situations i think that's huge definitely huge yeah. so yeah yeah we we were for I tried to drive, like you said, that is that is spot on for some of the design behind the paddle. Uh, the video that we shot for Warner, we, we were in the SS-107, yep. the front half of the day, fishing rivers. And then the second half of the day, we got in the bigger boat, the 127, out here at the lake behind my house. And it was trying to show how diverse that paddle really can be. And... We try to do everything, getting skinny water, getting lily pads, show open water going across a lake. Um, it, it, it's really nice. Uh, the shape of the blades are, are perfect. They're, they're big and powerful. They move plenty of water. And uh, it, it's the, the blade is super light. Uh, I was able to <laughs> I was able to figure a way out how to get the Yak Attack drip rings on. I yeah, was yeah. a little... I had to scratch my head a little bit but because I had to go over the lever. Gotcha. But uh, I, I went over the lever, and I was like, ah, man, it's, they're a little loose. I, I like them in a – I like to have my drip rings a fist width off of the blade. Okay. Uh, that not too deep. If you ever have to dig, you're not putting your rings underwater and throwing water all over yourself. But uh, I had to heat them up. I had to get a heat gun. And actually, heat the drip the drip rings up from where I stretched them a little bit going over that that lever. But they're they're dead on. They haven't moved since I heated them up. I heated them up and cooled them off really quick. And then I did that like three or four times. And then the last time I was quenching them, was ideally what I was trying to do. Sure. And then the last time I heated them up real good, and I just let them air cool, air quench. And they haven't moved, so it can be done. That's awesome. That's What's awesome. What's the weight on that paddle? Oh, I think it's like around 30 ounces. It's super light. It's super wow. light. Yeah, I picked one up when we were breaking down the show. And because uh, I got the carbon fiber shaft with the fiberglass blades. Uh, and I think it's about the same as mine, maybe a little bit lighter. I mean, it's it's like a feather, man. 
Yeah, 30 yeah. ounces is light for yeah. a paddle. I mean, if you're going to be spending a full day on the water, that's what you want, you know? Oh, yeah. And it's it's funny. Like, a lot of people don't think about that. I know uh, uh, I always reference uh, uh, Headwaters Kayak, Dan out there in uh, Lodi, California. He always says, you know, somebody's coming in to buy a boat. I ask them what their budget is. Say it's a thousand dollars. He says, "Well, I'm going to have you spend three hundred on a paddle and seven hundred on a boat." And people look at him cross-eyed. But when he goes through and explains, like you know, if you're spending all day paddling with a three-pound paddle versus thirty ounces, you know that that three-pound paddle is going to wear you down real quick, and it makes sense, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm all over that, man. So, um. Last topic for the uh, the evening. We got to talk drone footage, man. We, ah, yeah. We've been seeing uh, we've been seeing some drone footage come out of you, and I know you've uh, you've been you know learning a little bit and doing a lot more with it, and uh, I'm digging it, man. So, uh, what kind of drone are you using, and maybe uh, what was your influence about getting into you know the drone drone cinematography, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, my background, I uh, graduated in a degree in graphic design, but I minored in our double, I kind of double minor. I tried to try to double major, but I did uh, photography and art history. So nice. photography runs deep into me. I love it. Um, it's an easy way for me to express myself. Uh, and then Raw Valderi out of Miami. Yeah. And, and Kwanzaa Henderson out of the Miami area also. Um, I'm very good friends with both of those guys. Uh, I talk to Kwanzaa several times a week usually. Uh, we've been friends for a long, long time, and those guys are phenomenal photographers, uh, and they both fly drones, and they are amazing drone pilots, and some of the videos they do are, are top-notch, and it just made me have that. I don't know, a, des a desire, I guess, or I don't want to say a want, but I was, it was a desire to want to learn more about drones. And sure. I'm like, Man, I really don't know if I want to drop $1,500 in a, in my first drone. What right. if I ditch the thing in the water? What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. what, if, what if I can't fly it, you know? And what if it's a waste of time? Well, I thought about it for about a year, and then – just recently, uh, I, I purchased my first one. I fly a DJI Spark. Okay. Um, I like the Spark because it's ultra small. The body itself is small. It's as small as our phones. Yeah. And it's very portable, which is key to me because I can take it out on the rivers. I can get it out on the water super quick and very easily. And it, it, it's very easy to fly, actually. Uh, you just... You got to take your time, fly in open areas, fly very slow. Okay. Um, the, the Spark has a beginner mode in it, so it, it geo fences how far you can fly from where you're controlling it from, which I thought was really cool. So yeah. I could only go like 30 feet, and I could only go out like 100 feet. Uh, so I flew in beginner mode for like three flights, maybe, and then I was like, uh, I'm done with this. <laughs> I was cautious. I was very nervous. Um, but by then, I had insurance on the drone. Uh, I highly suggest that if you can. Uh, DJI offers a care package service for their drones. But uh, uh, my insurance company for my homeowners, they allowed me to put it on my homeowner's insurance as an article. Oh, nice. So I claimed it as an article, put a, a, a dollar amount on it, and... Now, don't worry about it. If it crashes in the lake, I can go tell. I call them. And, hey, my phone's in thirty feet of water, and they'll give me a check. I'll go get another. One. That's so awesome. That, it gave me peace of mind to start trying to trying to get better quicker. And the whole thing is talking to people who fly, and YouTube's just your like best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So me and. They're very quick. Um, you can slow stuff down on them. I didn't really want to slow my controllers down. 
I wanted to learn how to be smooth with the controller where it's at so I could still get, if I wanted to fly it, 20 miles an hour or 30 miles an hour to get to a location really quick and then slow it down. I could, um, I do, I do fly. I've probably, I've had my drone since the Saturday after black Friday. I probably have 120 hours on it right now. Um, I've, I've bought several batteries for it. Uh, the big thing that, that really helped elevate, my photography with the drone and videography was getting a set of filters for it. So okay. I run um, Polar Pro filters. They're snap-on filters. I got a, uh, I think it's an eight pack of them, six or eight filters. Uh, but they, it's almost like putting sunglasses on the camera. They're polarized. Um, they're set up for bright sunny days or cloudy days or, or whatever. And it really, takes all the glare out of the shot. You can still get glare intentionally if you want. And then just, you know, you can elevate everything in post edit. I try not to do a lot of post edit. I love raw photography, but I do tweak minor stuff in post. Uh, I don't, it's very easy to oversaturate or throw a lot of HDR to a photo. Then it can almost when you throw a lot of HDR at it, to me, it can almost start looking fake looking. Sure. sure. A separation of the photo itself. But I'm trying to get more into videography with it. Uh, I've, I've thrown up a handful of 30 second to two minute, you know, mini, mini short films that I've done. I've, I've flown in downtown Atlanta. I've, I've done some some shoots in Atlanta for, for Westbrook supply Co. Uh, and I fly all the time in my backyard, yeah. but I do more with it. Uh, as soon as it warms up real good, we're going to get some really good river footage stuff yeah. coming. Uh, we'll get a lot of swamp, swamp footage. And I'm hoping, uh, I've got to figure out where I'm going on vacation, but I'm going to make sure I can bring it down there. Uh, to the Caribbean somewhere, nice, and, and get nice aerial shots while I'm down there. And if I happen to go fishing, I'll definitely take it with me. Nice. Yeah, no, I'm digging it, man. Um, you you've been putting out some cool stuff with it, and it's something that uh, Jay and I have been talking about getting into. Is you know doing some drone stuff, and you know I think that's the new way for like the YouTube videos and stuff like that. You know, a lot of guys are doing it and adding it to the mix, and uh, you can just get some super killer shots that you don't normally see, you know, um, because you can get a high up in the air and things like that. So, no, we're digging it, man. We're digging it. So don't don't stop. Oh no, it's just beginning. Nice. Uh, I've I've really tried to take the time and, and learn all the FAA stuff that I can. Sure. Um, I, reg I registered as a pilot. Uh, I'm gonna try to go ahead maybe before summer and take my part 107 test um and become a full-fledged drone pilot that way i can sell images or do real estate i got nice. some real estate i'm friends with uh but yeah i'll probably upgrade you know maybe maybe this summer try to i'll probably sell the spark and, and upgrade i don't i don't know what to right now i really like the mavic air yeah it shoots for me it's real, real compact, but man, that that Mavic Pro Two is something else. <laughs> Heck I've yeah. seen some fit. It's unbelievable. It's got a one of them got a zoom camera on it by Sony. The the other one has a Hasselblad medium format camera on it. They're shooting like twenty four megapixel. That's so awesome. Insane. The detail and I mean, you can blow something up the size of a billboard with that. Yeah. Not lose any resolution. Yeah. They're fun thinking about it absolutely i would i would say start off simple and, and just study up on the faa rules and regulations uh you know a lot of people want to max those things out i mean so you can't when you get up 300 feet in the air you're like wow man i don't really need to get no higher than yeah this. <laughs> right right <clears throat> yeah and i think you can't even go over 400 feet right this yeah 400 uh, yeah you cut off Yep. There's only uh so uh, there is a way to go over 400. 
Um, so if, I'm, I'm just speaking hypothetically here. So if there's a, a building in front of you that's 500 feet tall, you can fly up to that building and you got to be within 400 feet of the building. And then you can fly up to the top of the building plus another 400 feet above it. Oh, wow. And that's, so you can get to 900. <laughs> um, I wouldn't do that with a spark just because I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've flown in a big city, and I, I had a little—I had a little bit of issue with mine, but I was able to recover. But with another drone that's more powerful, that's more receptive to satellite signals, Wi-Fi, what have you. Sure. Uh, I think—I think you would be fine, without a doubt. I mean, shoot, I've seen guys send them. I've seen footage on YouTube where. They've got them up twenty thousand feet in the air, and I'm like, man, <laughs> that's, that's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah. Very cool, man. Very cool. You got any other questions for my man, Jay? No, man, I'm good. Uh, well, you know, actually, so as far as that spark goes, um, I've been actually looking at that a lot too, uh, just because from a fiscal standpoint, the size. You know how easy it is to get parts for it. Uh, plus, DJI, you know, DJI is a really respected company in the drone world. You know, uh, I mean, they pretty much hold like the first five spots for the most part. Uh, yeah. Would you say it's a pretty durable, uh, a pretty durable drone? Have you crashed it? You know, yeah. have you gotten any mishaps with it? Because, because I think that one, if I'm not mistaken, that one does have the perimeter, and not so much the GPS whatever you called it like where it knows where it is but it has that function in it like entirely doesn't it so it knows when you're going to get close to a wall or a bush or anything else yeah it does uh they're they're really durable they're a lot more durable than people think um i haven't really i i did have a mishap with mine i, I didn't crash um but i did i lost control of it in downtown atlanta uh, i think because it's so small it was there. Were, I was I was seriously like in the heart of downtown Atlanta, and I my daughter lives there, and I wanted to get some nice aerial shots for her for her her house, and I, I threw it up in the air, and it took a couple of times, and I was like, oh man, no alarms, okay, we're ready to roll. And I sent it up, and within it went, it was great for about three minutes. I shot photos of the new Mercedes Benz Stadium and all that, and and spun around and got some skyline pictures, and then all of a sudden I had a electromagnetic interference alarm while I was 200 feet in the air. Oh wow! And I started to bring it down, and that was caused from all the Wi-Fi signals that were bouncing around through sure. downtown, and all the steel and metal structures. Um, the the spark does fly via Wi-Fi. But I bypass the Wi-Fi because I throw a OTG cable on there, and it makes this it makes it fly a lot better. Uh, it's a lot stronger. It's only a it's a phone cable <laughs> with an adapter on it, because um, your phone is actually your screen. And I was flying with the OTG, but I guess that thing's just so small it couldn't handle it, and it it took off. And within forty one seconds. I lost control of it, regained control of it, and lost control of it again. But I, it, it set itself down on a parking deck, which I was very fortunate. That yeah. I looked for it for an hour, and I was able to find it. Uh, but there was no damage to it. But, yes, they do have the sensors. Uh, so it's got bottom sensors and front-facing sensors on them. So it'll pick up a tree. So, basically, if you get within about – 12 feet of a tree uh it will pick it up um if you get within 12 foot of yourself it will pick it up and it'll stop it, it doesn't stop and fly around you like the higher the higher end drones like the air and the mavic uh it actually just stops and it'll start beeping and let you know on your phone that hey fix me <laughs> um, <laughs> the bottom sensors are, are perfect uh, so you can bring it down as fast as you want, as long as you're not in sport mode. Uh, if you're just flying in normal mode, which is about six miles an hour, um, you can bring it down 
And once it gets within a foot of the ground or a foot with wherever you're wanting to land it, it'll stop and it'll hover. And it makes you actually pull down on the joystick again to make it land. And once it makes contact with the ground, the prop shut down. That's cool. Hmm. That's cool. Sounds like that's what I'm getting. <laughs> it, 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 it's really a, it's a perfect first drone. Uh, it, uh, some people like it better than the higher end drones. Yeah, uh, it'll do anything that you can imagine. Just about it. The, the gimbal's real smooth on it. Um, I've got my gimbal turned way down, so I get real smooth cinematic style filming. Um, that's a secret that everybody should jump into. So if you're gonna get a drone, definitely watch videos on turning messing with the gimbal speed. Uh, it makes a world of difference. And you can set up your controller to have the gimbal, like on my controller, I can have the gimbal pointing straight down at the ground. I hit one of my function buttons, and then it's pointing right back up in front of me so I can see where I'm going. But, yeah, man, if you're, if you're thinking about getting a drone, absolutely. Jump into that Spark. Um, you, you won't regret it at all. That's awesome. Feel free, if you guys get one, feel free to reach out to me. We'll... Well, I'll help you any way I can with it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, thanks for that, man. Heck yeah. Go pick one up right now, Jay. It's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> I was already looking at them today. Yeah. Like, I was looking at a whole bunch of them. I'm like, man, this, I was like, I've always seen, I've always known about the Spark and sure. uh, you know, about the, the evolution of the uh, the drones throughout the DJI um, uh, uh, options, you know, all their models. But I've always known that Spark, man, is uh, it, the price point is like 300 bucks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's got a 1080p, you know, um, uh, what's it called, you know, camera on there. And, you know, it, it doesn't fly as long as the bigger ones do. But, I mean, nothing is expensive for that, sure. that drone. Sure, You know, plus you, there's plenty of rotors. Like I said, the parts are everywhere. Yeah. You know, so like to be expected that, you know, you're going to crash every now and then or something's going to happen. So, but yeah, I mean, and everything, all the videos, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> I'm, awesome. I'm glad actually here you got that DJ, you know, you got the spark because now I know I'm like, all right, all right, this feels good. You know, I mean, Casey and I stand showed us, you know, but yeah. you know, here and like, you know, regular Joe's using it. I mean, that's, I mean, now, you know, it's really tried and true. Hey, this is no regular Joe, man. This is part okay. of the bonafide team over here, bro. <laughs> you better watch your step. My, my Respect. Mistake. Respect. Sorry. Yes. Uh, uh. Uh, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Hey Jay, if you're gonna if you if you guys are gonna grab one, be sure to get one that has the fly more package with it. That way you get fly more package. That way it like comes it. with extra comes with extra props. The props are only eleven bucks a set, but it comes with two extra sets of props. It comes with the controller. You don't want to fly it on your phone. Let your phone be your screen, because sure. this you can pack it full of information. This your phone, the viewer can be slam full of information, uh, but the controller is where it's at. I mean, you got to have that bad boy. And go ahead and get whatever phones you guys have. Get the OTG cable for it, and man, you're in like Flynn. Right on. So it's an OTG cable. Yeah. Yeah, they make. I mean, it's basically a phone charger cable for Samsung or Android or Android Samsung or iPhone, and then it's just you get the little adapter for it, an OTG adapter for whatever phone you're running, and it really elevates. You're not flying on Wi-Fi then, and that's that's key. I mean, because you can you can fly up to 400 feet and not worry about the thing. Um, sometimes. Oh, cool. I've, I've, I've flown across my lake and and come back, and I don't worry about it, really. I'm, besides that one little blip we had in Atlanta, but other than that, it's it's been spot on. That's awesome. Batteries are That's only cool. three. So, yeah. Sweet. Well, uh, this is winding down, man. Uh, JD, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with us, my man. Uh why don't you take a second and uh, maybe plug your sponsors and how guys could uh, follow you on social media and all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, 
first of all, thank you guys so much for allowing me to be a guest on your uh, on the Paddle and Fin podcast. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, this was something that I've been looking forward to since you and I spoke, Brian. Nice. And it, it's last, man. Uh, I hope we can all connect together in person and, and, and wet some lines and, uh, you know, get these bona fides and Jackson boats slimed up properly. Uh, yeah, so you can follow me on Facebook, uh, JD DeRosiers, and on Instagram, it's JD DeRosiers, all one word. And uh, I can't I can't say enough uh, about my family, uh, my wife and my kids and my close friends and my mom who have supported me through this journey. Um, I've got to give all respect to, to Jesus Christ for the talents and abilities he's blessed me with. And, uh, of course, Bonafide, Yak Attack partner, Z-Man, Smith, uh, Powerpole, Ray Marine, Sims, uh, yeah, uh, Astral. Uh, they're, they're right here in my backyard. I, I couldn't do it without all of them. I'm very gracious and blessed. And, uh, I hope we can all connect one day. Absolutely, man. It's going to happen good, for sure, for sure. No, that's awesome. Um, real quick, guys, couple announcements. Uh, talk to Eric from Hammered Lures, uh, the plastic recycling program. Uh, if you guys haven't heard about this yet, this was on uh, a previous podcast. Uh, Eric from Hammered Lures, uh, what I'm going to do in the show notes is list an address, send us your recycled plastics, Eric is going to melt those down, and they're going to get donated to the Heroes on the Water chapters. Uh, just a side note with that, if you're sending a Z-Man plastic, keep those separate from your regular plastics. Um, if you guys could ship those out, man, it's going for a good cause. Heroes on the Water is, is obviously everybody knows about it. It's just a good thing for, uh, for our veterans. And, uh, you know, this was a project uh, Eric and and I have been working on, and uh, we finally got some details hammered out. So this season, save all your plastic baits, send them to the address in the show notes. I'm going to put it in all the show notes from here on out. Um, send them to us. Eric's going to melt those down, make some new bait, baits to get donated to the Heroes on the Water Foundation. Uh, so if you guys could help us out with that, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you guys have a question, comment. Want to hear a show topic, uh, hear from uh, another guest like JD, uh, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, in fin at gmail.com, or hit us up on our social media sites, or uh, hit us up on the website, paddle, the letter N, in fin.com. Shout out to our boys at Rocktown Adventures. Uh, if you guys are looking for a new bonafide boat, they will be in stock towards the end of the week that this episode airs. They got the 127, the 107, and the new 11.7 coming in. So uh, if you guys are looking for a cool hand blue, it's already been spoken for. I apologize for that, but they will have more. So, uh, you know, check out rocktownadventures.com. Till next time, guys, tight lines and smooth paddling. <laughs>